please, sit down, sit down, wait, wait, wait. Whoa! Tell you, man, I love church. <laughs> oh, man, I love church. Well, praise the Lord. Hold your Bible high above your head and repeat after me. Yeah, say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. And I believe that there is power in the word of God. I'm about to receive the seed of the word of God. And the devil will not steal my seed. But I will prosper from what I receive today. From this moment forward, I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. You believe that, put your hands together and praise the Lord. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot. If you're a first time visitor, please stand to your feet real quick. I just want to give you something. You don't have to say anything. Just want to give you something. Amen. Come on, give our guests a hand. We're going to give you one of our welcome packages. Inside that welcome package, you're going to find a little magazine that tells you all about our church and our ministry. Oh, there's a, there's a card in there that says, let's get acquainted. I want you to put that in the offering set, call that offering time uh, so that we can put you on the mailing list, keep you abreast on all the great things going on here at the Word of Life Community Church. And there's a CD, a teaching CD, that you can run, play at your house, and get more familiar with the teaching. Come on, give them another hand, clap and pray. Amen. I got 30, less than 30 minutes, but I enjoyed every minute I just spent. Look at somebody say, nothing like the presence of God. Oh, find somebody with some real faith. Tell them there's nothing like the presence of God. See, most folk, when the devil try to get them to go on through, they stay away from the church. That's the time when you need to be running to church. When the devil try to hit you in the head, make challenge you in your body, you need to get to the household of faith. Get around some believers, glory to God. Get away from all them old depressed folk. We've been in a series, a Christian life series, just dealing with different issues and stances that the Bible takes that what's been provided for us. And so this week, going through different personal situations, the Lord led me to revisit for you. We want me to do today, he said, we want you to come in. I want you to compare the covenants for them. Compare the covenants. I mean, we got a little hum now. Can y'all find that? Compare the covenants. There it goes. It's gone. Compare the comparison of the covenants. It, it's so powerful because when we look, yeah, yeah, I, I'll do it right there, Holy Ghost. Go, let, let's for foundation. Go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I want you at the third verse. Romans chapter 8, verse 3. When everybody finds it, say amen. All right. We're waiting on some of you. See, when faith comes out, we're alive. Hearing by what? See, so what we ask you to read here is not a reading drill. It's not a reading drill. What, what we want to do is see faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So the only way we can get faith for what we hear, it, faith for the word, is by what we hear. So you got to read that word out loud. See, meditation does one thing. The Bible says in Joshua 1 and 8 that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. So that's when I just sit there and read it to myself and ponder over the word in my own mind. He said, then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. See, a lot of people don't really understand the real true key to real being prosperous and successful in life is getting a hold to the manifested word of God. It's not in how many cars you might have, how much money you got in your pocket, all that old stuff. It, but it's, it's, it's in heaven and possessing a com what I call a command of the scripture. And when you have a command of the scripture, you know which, what scripture to use in any given situation. But if you do not spend time in the word, you won't know that information. Amen. So what we have to do is, is we have to read that word out loud because I get faith for it every time I hear it. And see, when we begin to understand about these covenants, it, it's so powerful because God, God did this for us. And I need to recognize what God has done. And then I need to understand it. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing, but in all of thy getting, get understanding. Get understanding. No sense of going to church and leave out the door. You don't understand. Nothing went on. Talking about the preacher, show preach, but you can't tell me nothing he preached about. 
Amen. I, 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 sometimes I'm with people and, and they say, man, we sure had a good time at church. I said, well, what did the preacher preach about? Give me three things he talked about. They go to Abba Dabba Dabba. Well, you get like Scooby Doo, you know what I mean? All right, Rick, let's go to Romans 8 and 3. Y'all got it? I want you to read that third verse. Ready to read it together. Ready to read. Yes. Read it again. Read it again. We're talking about everybody said we're talking about Jesus. So we're talking about what Jesus did. And this is what the Bible says that Jesus did. All right, come on, read it. Read it. It was weak through the flesh. Keep reading. My God. Yes. Jesus condemned sin in the flesh. But notice something. It says that the law was weak through the flesh. The law was weak. Now, when they talk about the law, they're talking about the first original five books of the Bible. Then it progresses to all of the Old Testament books. The Bible has two sections. The Bible, say that with me. The Bible has two sections. Come on, one more time. The Bible has two sections. It has the Old Covenant and it has the New Covenant. Two sections, the old and the new. One Bible, two different compartments. So when we get to Romans chapter 8, at that third verse, he says that the law was weak through the flesh. In other words, when we go to this comparison, you will see and find that in the beginning, everything was on us. And, 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 and because the flesh is so weak, we didn't have the personal power nor the propensity to keep up what God had put on us. Are you listening to me? So in Romans, Paul begins to say, but who was a chief, uh, not only apostle, but he was a head Jew, born in Rome. So he was a Roman citizen as well as born of Jewish descent been in the synagogue, sat under the feet of one of the chief teachers of that day, a man named Gamaliel, and, and he learned from the mouth of those who had personal experience with the word since the day of Moses. And he gets to the New Testament after his conversion in the eighth chapter, and the Holy Ghost has him to pin to us way down here in the 22nd century that the law was weak through the flesh. And that God, so then, so to speak, began to see that man just couldn't keep this up for himself. And you have to understand that when God created man, he created us to be with him. The devil is not our daddy. We might act like the daddy, the devil sometimes, but he's not your father. The world may try to get you to think that that's where you belong and that's who you belong to, but you belong to God. Somebody ought to shout, I belong to God. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Say it again. I belong to God. Say everything about me belongs to God. And so when you see this, let's come over here because I don't have but a few more minutes. I'm going to try to do it within the time that's allowed it on the clock. But let's go over here to, back to uh, Exodus chapter 20. And what's interesting about this is just like there were 10 commandments, 10 things that God put on man, when we see the comparison, and I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, we're going to see that there's 10 things he promised to do in the new covenant. Come on. Yes, yes. Come on. So he matched 10 for 10. Glory, that's how, that's how important I am to God. Yeah. Till he wanted to fix it where I can eternally be with him. Right now, it may appear that I'm separated from him, but the moment I can tap into the spirit, I'm right there with him. All right, come on, let's, let's read these 10. Uh, Exodus chapter 20, 
I want to start at verse 3. Ready? Start at verse 2 and let's read on down. I want you to read it all the way down to verse 17 and I'm going to come back and re revisit them. All right? Ready? Read. I am the Lord thy God. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images, uh -huh. or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, uh -huh. or that is in the water or the earth. Keep reading. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I am the Lord thy God, and am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth. You know what? I got to stop it right there because, see, it was so much going on even in our families today that if we're not careful, it'll keep repeating itself. History repeats itself because of ignorance. Notice it say that same stuff that your great granddad and them was into, it can reach down here and grab you. Say, visit, that, that thing of visit, adultery, fornication, that stuff of visit, uh, uh, divorce, that stuff of visit, keep visiting in the family until somebody raise up and break it. Yeah. See, iniquity is a weakness in your flesh. So, so, so if you come to one of them party families, you're going to have to fight all them different kind of addiction, demons, and everything else. Why? Because that stuff been loose down in your generation. Yeah. Yeah. Keep reading. And showing mercy. Uh-huh. Keep reading. Uh-huh. Keep reading. See, God said he would not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. You got to quit playing with the name of God. Yeah, yeah, you got to take the things of God serious. This stuff ain't no joke. God ain't playing. Keep reading. Got to go to church. Got to go to church. Should nobody be calling you all the time, reminding you to get up and come on and go to church? Say, remember the Sabbath day, the one that set aside for God. Every other day he gave you. You make money five, six days a week, but the seven days say you can come see me. Come spend a little time with me. Come on, keep reading. Now, now watch this. this. That's so powerful. Because I just personally believe if we do things God's way, we will get the reward of God. That's right. See, some folks think they got to work all the time and still don't get nothing accomplished. So God said, and I, and I know some jobs, they give you a schedule. So you have to go when the people schedule you to work. Don't think I'm finna get crazy. If you don't own the company, you can't be talking about, I ain't going to work Sunday. But you can go to the supervisor and say, I understand that I, I have to work some Sundays, but do I have to work them all? I understand that I got to work some Sundays, but can I come and do the closing? Uh, on Sunday, that Sunday, can I work that swing shift? Because you don't have no control over that. See what I'm saying? But you can't make your request known. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. See, favor ain't foul. So you ain't telling them that you have all of them off. You just ask for a few just so I can go to church. I worship God. Look at somebody and say, I need to go to church so I can worship God. See, then that means if I, if I honor God's word, put my trust and my confidence in God's word, that means what has to happen? God got to honor his word in my life. I'm in the book. If I'm willing and obedient, I'm going to eat the good of the land. So I already know and understand that God wants me eating the good of the land. That's his desire. So I just got to follow his way. All right, come on. Let's finish. Read. Ready to read. No, I can Keep reading. Uh-huh. Yeah. Come on, somebody said it's a blessed day. Come on, say this is a blessed day. Come on, this is a blessed day. Saying not only was is it a blessed day, 
But it's a powerful day. It's a powerful day. This is the day of the Lord. All right, keep reading. We got to finish. Come on. Oh, Jesus. Every time I disrespect my folk, I cut the days off of my life. That's right. Young folk, y'all better hear that. That's why so many of them die young. That's why, that's why some of them die young. See, that, that's the one of the only ones you read where had a certain specific promise to it. He noted the penalty on that. You can think down in your family, some folk that didn't really respect their elders and their grown folk, them people ain't here now. I ain't getting in my personal business. I see some of my relatives. They ain't here no more. Yeah. They dying under 50 and 50. We just finna figure this thing out. That's up. That's up. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. All right, let's go. Come on, read. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Keep reading. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Jesus. Quit all that line. Keep going. Keep reading. Thou shalt not coach thy neighbor's wife, nor his man servant, nor his maid servant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is not made. Oh, they might need to change that with the ox and the ass, because you know they have them design all kind of stuff out here now. Y'all will catch that next week. Keep reading. And all the people saw the thundering and the lightning and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoke. And when the people saw it, they moved and stood afar. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou unto us, and we will hear. But let not God speak to us, least we die. Wow. Wow. So the folks said, We'd rather hear from the man of God. Tell God to on up there on that mountain. <laughs> All right. Now, 10 things he told us in here. Watch. Look at them. Look at them real carefully. And each one of them was on you. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. I'm not going to go over because you saw him yourself. Thou shalt not. Thou, 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 thou. Then we went to Romans. We saw that where he said it was weak through the flesh. See, because everything was on you. You're going to make mistakes. You're human. You're going to make bad decisions. Are you listening to me? So God saw that the weight of the responsibility was just too heavy for mankind. So he spoke in Jeremiah, we won't go there, but he said, I'm going to make a new and a better covenant. Because this one, they can't keep. Being they can't keep it. This stuff is too hard on them. So he said, I'm going to send Jesus. I'm going to wrap myself up in flesh. I'm going to send Jesus to come down here, live like a regular man. See, you have to understand, when Jesus walked the earth, y'all, he was a man filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, you understand? So so when he did the miracles, the signs, and the wonders, he was trying to demonstrate to you and I how we, having the same power made available unto us, could walk the same way Jesus walked. And then Jesus himself said, even greater works will you do. Now, let me help you with that because, you know, somebody said, how can we do greater works than Jesus? Well, Jesus only had three years to do all the stuff he did. So every miracle, every sign, every wonder, he did it in a three-year span. Prayerfully, you and I are going to be here longer than three years, possessors of the anointing. So the anointing is in me. Come on, say that. The anointing is in me. Yeah, yeah. So come on, say it again. The anointing is in me. Say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. See, it's anointing the coach. Yeah, it's anointing the cook. You ever know some folk can cook, some folk can't? Some people say, you love these. Some folks say, praise the Lord. Because it's an anointing. See, the anointing, come on, say this with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's for the function in everyday life. 
It's not just for Sundays. That's right. he, he superimposed himself on me so I could be supernatural. No. I'm a spiritual being having a natural experience. Amen. One place in Corinthians said, I'm not a mere man. So you look at me, you just, oh, that's just Henry Roberts. No, I got you fool. Yeah. I just look like this. Yeah. But I'm really Superman. I ain't never Clark Kent. Know how I know I'm Superman because the devil keeps showing up for me to whoop him. Oh, ain't nobody up in here. Ain't nobody. See, I'm supposed to be depressed, downtrodden, and can't function, and just. The devil's a lie. The blood of Jesus is against it. So there's a comparison. He said, go and show the people the comparison. Now let's go. What were we back there in the back, Joe? Hebrews 10. Yeah, see, we don't be back there smoking and telling jokes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm turning these boys into a million winces. I want you to go to Hebrews 10, what we starting at 16 verse, down to what verse? 22. We're going to go Hebrews 10, 16 through 22. Now remember, see, I'm almost through. Remember, everything in the old covenant was on you. It's just too heavy for you. Yeah, you know y'all going to like them girls. Yeah. You ain't supposed to be liking boys. You know them girls gonna like them boys. Puberty gonna kick in. Then we gonna have to start watching everything. Cause we don't want nothing premature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, and then I'm gonna help you. Let me say it. Some of y'all parents are not as old as some of your peer parents. See, like Trey and William, them, they got a kind of old daddy. So I kind of got old-fashioned ways. You know, I'm a little bit more liberal, but I, I still think and talk like my folk. I'm the last of that generation. See, I didn't have them at 16 or 17 or 18 years old. I was a grown man paying bills when they got here. So my mindset is different from a parent that's half my age. So what we gonna hold you to the standard and what the saved saints supposed to be holding their children to even the standard is gonna be a little bit high, uh -uh, correct that, much higher than people who are carnal or naturally minded, just folks in the world. It ain't we being hard on you. We try, look, I used to think my folk was hard. It kept me out of prison. That's all I'm going to say. Some bumps on my head I ain't had to get because I learned how to listen. We, we, we were over just visiting. I, I'm trying to go. Y'all pray for me. Give me 10 minutes. Can I have 10 minutes on the clock? Because I just took a little detour. We was over my cousin's house. We were talking about when we was little. And how we build walk the LK house and Tony and all them, they was older, you know, and they see they gonna break them rules in high. Yes, sir. So all of us that was younger, we used to see the results yes, of what happened to the ones that break the rule. Yes, how many of y'all remember Hot Wheel Tracks? Y'all yeah. <laughs> y'all remember Hot Wheel? Yeah. Some of y'all men and y'all ain't had no Hot Wheel. They used to sell Hot Wheels all at the dollar store. Now, come on. You ain't had to have electricity to play with a Hot Wheel. You just set it up here on the thing, let a track run down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, well, you know, see, see, here we go another thing. Well, okay, okay. He'll tan your hide with two or three of them during Hot Wheel track. And so me and LK Jr. and all us little ones around there, we see them whoopings, yes, especially me. I don't like no whoopings. 
You can straighten me up real quick because I, I ain't trying to be punished. I want my freedom. I like freedom. So we see them boys that get tore up so bad till we ain't want none of that fire. And I learned a long time ago to learn from somebody else's mistake. Then I ain't got to take that. Just like they're going to try to take that boy's job for whooping his son. Tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. You need to move up. Quit dealing with people who don't have your mindset trying to go where you go. Now the girl on there talking about, he don't need to lose his way. You shouldn't have been on here trying to call no police because you know that little boy needed butt whoop. The Bible say being the sap wise young. Say beat your child. It'll save his soul from a burning hell. Say foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction, watch it, will drive it far away from it. Now, it, it ain't say be punching all on them and all that. You know what? That was the hind part back here for. Yeah. See, most of us, God put an extra cushion back there. It, it's built to handle that extra impact. <laughs> Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But the law, I'm back. Was weak through the flesh. People just couldn't keep it. Yeah. So God implemented something. And we're going to come over here and we're going to see. 16 through 22, is that what we said? Amen. When we get through this, I'm going to have to stop. Y'all getting anything today? Amen. You being blessed? Amen. You learning anything? Amen. All right, ready? Let's read. This is the covenant that I will make with them. All right, stop. Now, make sure you write that down. Now, this is the covenant that you and I live under now. This is the eighth and final covenant. Eight is the number of new beginnings. The, the old stuff didn't pass away, but the old, the old made us recognize what sin was. If there were no rules, I wouldn't know when I was breaking them. See, over here in America, we got speed limits. Over there in Germany, I think it is, on that Autobahn, you just punch it. No restriction, no restraint. But over here, they're pulling you back. They got some regulations. So you know when you're breaking the law. So that's why the judge, when the joker go to court, he tell him ignorance of the law is no excuse. You be talking about, your honor, I ain't know. Okay, that's all right. You finna find out. <laughs> all right, come on, let's read. Ready to read. This is the covenant that I will make with them. Come on, read. Uh-huh. Keep reading. Uh huh. Keep reading. Keep reading. Yes. Yes. Full assurance. My God. He is faithful that promise. Now watch, I'm gonna show you how he came back. Remember the first one, when we were in old covenant, he kept saying, Thou shalt. Thou shalt. Thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt not do that. Thou, 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 thou. Did you notice something? In this side, he said, I will. Come on, here, Doc. Yes. What you mean, the comparison and the contract? He said, I will. So no longer being is it on me. Yes. Now it's all about what he is going to do and what he has done. Watch this. We almost out of here. Number one, he said, I'm going to put the, my law or my word, that's at verse 16, in their hearts. God said, I'm going to put my word, that's the first one, in your heart, down in your spirit. 
One place, I remember when you take new members class, I think it's Psalm 119, you learn that word, have I, I can't hear you, that I might not sin against you. So, so he said, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to deposit the word in their hearts. Number two, not only is it going to be in your spirit, but he said, I'm going to put it in your mind. And, and you know what the scripture said about having the word of God on your mind? He said, I'll keep them in perfect peace. Amen. Whose mind is stayed. Won't get rid of confusion, start spending more time in the word of God. Won't get level out in life, spend more time in the word of God. God said, I'm going to put it first of all in their spirits, in your heart. Secondly, in your mind. Third, so powerful. It's to, say this with me, it's the power of forgiveness. One more time. It's the power of forgiveness. Now look to the left and to the right. Say, God has forgiven you. Now you need to forgive yourself. Right. So, so number, number one, he said, I'm going to put the law in your heart. Number two, he said, I'm going to put it in your mind. Number three, he said, I will not remember what? That's verse 17. Read verse 17. Read it, read it. Wow. Wow. It's been erased. It's been eradicated. All this, notice, he kept saying, he will. Watch. In that old covenant, you used to have to run down the deal. The turtle dove. Bring that stuff to the altar. He presented himself a living sacrifice. When he went to the cross. And, and, and look, look, look. See, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't resist it. He was in the garden, and he said, nevertheless, not your will, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. He yielded to the will of God, went to the cross willingly for us. Ain't many folk. You, you could be the committed a murder, and God be the forgave you, but if they got you on death row, you ain't trying to go to the gas chamber of the electric chair. Chaplains had to go minister to these guys because they're not cognizant of what they did at that time. Don't ever let yourself get so angry till you don't count your consequences before you make an action. See, and I try to tell my kids, man, anyway, you got to go where you feel threatened. You don't need to be going now. I got a cousin died by 25. Had a dream. We were up getting my uncle's body. And, and we were in a place, and the folk pushed me back in a building. And the door closed, and I couldn't get out there to him. I woke up the next morning. He and I, we went to Buffalo, New York. I said, Sean, I don't know what it is, but I was put in a situation, and you was in a fight and I couldn't get to you. I said, let me tell you something. He had this old girl he was fooling with, full of mess. He lived in New Orleans. Now, that's where my dad and him from. He goes to a, a gunfight with a baseball bat. Soon as we got home and buried my uncle, hey, some of y'all around here remember that? He was 25 years old, but couldn't leave that crazy woman alone. If they crazy, listen, leave them alone. You got right, you got somebody you always got to be proving your manhood because she's staying in a bunch of mess. Boy, please. But leave that don't know what they say that thought alone. Uh-huh. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I said it just like y'all said. Yeah. <laughs> Two or three people say, keep it real. Y'all yeah. call them thoughts. The Bible calls them hoes, prostitutes. So y'all got a proper name for it, a disguise, old hidden name. The Bible call it what it is. 
One of Jesus' great, 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 great grandmama. Every time the Bible talk about it, they refer to us Rahab the harlot. This is one of the most realest books you can find, man. It's incest in here. It's murder in here. It's all kind of stuff up in. And this, 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 listen, these are people's actual lives. That's right. Soap operas ain't got nothing on Israel. Somebody say, what's it about? Ask them young folk. That one over there. Come on, come on. Third, number one. <laughs> he gonna put the law in your heart. Number two, he said, he's gonna put it in your mind. Number three, in the verse 17, he said, I'm gonna remember your sins and your iniquities no more. Number four, he is the final sacrifice. Read verse 18 for me. He see, ain't no sense in bringing another one because he the final. Read it. Well, remission of sin is, see, remit means to literally remove. So there's no record when you repent of your old sins. People might remember it. The news might remember it, but ain't no record of it in heaven. Because the blood of Jesus is so thick, it just covered it in. Look at somebody say, thank God you covered Just for the sake of time, number five, is that where I am? I think y'all know number four was he is the final sacrifice. Write it down. For sins, yes, ma'am. Say after that one, you don't need no more. Number five, he's given us open access to him. That's verse 19. I'm going to wait on y'all to finish writing and I'm going to get you to read. Yeah, he's given us, see, it used to be a time, that's why like in Catholic churches, in some what we call sacramental churches, you, they, you still had to go to the priest and talk about your sins and make confession. But because of this word here, yeah, you can come talk to me, make you feel better, hopefully. But I can't forgive you. He's already done that for you. Or you understand where I'm coming from. So, so, so he says, now I can go for myself. See, I was talking to another preacher. You're talking about one, one of the members that was sick. And I say, well, because in some churches, they train you to depend on the man of God, not the God of the man of God. See, I'm trying to get y'all familiar with my God. See, when, when Elisha got Elijah got carried away in the whirlwind he threw his mantle back and his assistant said where is the Lord God of Elijah he didn't say where is Elijah he said my father my father the horsemen of Israel and the chariots thereof then he smoked the water and said where is the Lord God of Elijah and whenever God in the old covenant referred to himself oh I'm teaching he told him I'm the God of your fathers I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Yeah, yeah. See, I got to point you to God because sometimes you ain't going to be able to reach me. Teach you. Now, I'm showing you because he went to the cross, you got access for yourself. Even during Jesus' time, before he went to the cross, when he healed the blind folk, oh, I'm revelating. When he healed those blind men, he told the lepers, the lepers, he said, go show yourself to the priest, because that was the order of the day. And when the priest tell the lepers you cleanse, then you can go back and be in general population. Amen. But when the veil of the temple was rent from the top to the bottom, he gave us access. Amen. Now I can go farther in the name of Jesus. Come on, read my verse. We trying. Y'all getting anything today? All right, read. Read verse 19. Watch. Here it is. Watch. Watch, number six. He has given us a new way of life. He provided it for us. Knows everything else in the old covenant, you had to do it 
for yourself. Under the new covenant, it's all about what he's done. All right, all right, look at verse 20. Y'all ought to still be on the same page, right? All right. I'm saying, look at it. Y'all know what I mean. Read it. All right. Amen. 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 Y'all, y'all ain't used to me yet. <laughs> Come on, read. Ready to read. Through his flesh. He gave me a new and a living way. Now, now God, even when I mess up and I repent, God don't see me. He sees the blood of Jesus. That's why I can keep coming. You, you, you can't understand why I got this comeback power. Well, I don't have no choice but to come back. I'm like Peter. I don't know where else to go. Sometimes I be wanting to take a Sunday off. I be telling no, nah, I ain't going to feel right if I don't go to church. Some of y'all going to take it or leave it. First time we all went on a cruise, sharing, I'm Sunday morning, I'm up looking for what they had in Bible study. I went there, I was so depressed. I was sitting there like, Lord, they need to get gone. Let me teach the lesson today because he ain't saying nothing. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be hard, but see, when your spirit used to being fed, man, you got to eat. Don't be inviting me to your house and you ain't got enough food. Because I ain't trying to be cute. You come call me over there to eat, I'm coming to eat. Be hissing out the plate, you got one little piece of chicken, one rib, I weigh almost 300 pounds. <laughs> Amen. It is what it is, y'all. Y'all know that how people do. No, we gonna fix their plate, cause they act like they don't know how to do it. Don't be inviting nobody over your house. You got a little, I got to come over here and be conservative. Yeah. Leave that hungry. You all in the car. Baby, you, I'm still hungry. Let's, let's go get a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> Try, right, right. You trying to have a party, ain't got no money. <laughs> so the place say stop. All right, I'm going to stop right there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Wait, wait. Verse 20. That was number six. He's giving us a new way of life. Number seven, watch this. Number seven, he is our high priest forever. He's our high priest. In other words, what that means is he's going to oversee and make sure I get this. See, now I can't break this covenant, but I can walk away from it. Are you listening to me? I can't break it. Ain't nothing I can do to make him that mad with me. But I can walk away from it. That's verse 22. Watch. He is our high priest. Remember I told you when we were teaching on the priesthood of Jesus, how his job is to oversee and make sure you get what's coming to you, you get what's coming to you, you get what's coming to you. Don't nobody have to get jealous. That's why in the kingdom we should not be jealous of each other. We should be celebrating one another because God has enough for everybody. All I got to do is take initiative and go get mine. Come on, what's that verse? Verse 22. We almost home. We almost home. I'm so sorry. Y'all getting anything? Amen. All right, come on. Verse 22. Ready to read it. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. 21. I'm sorry. Go to 21. 21. And having a high priest, oh, so he is, come on, say that, Jesus, Jesus. is my high priest. He's my, high priest. He's my pastor's He's priest. My pastor's priest. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. See, Amen. he gives me the authority now to come minister this to you. That's right, man. That's right. But we are all covered by him. Yeah. And when you can't reach your priest, you got direct access to this priest. Amen. All right, number, 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 number nine, number nine is Amen. that, number eight Number eight, number eight. He's given us a clear conscience. Wait, oh, oh, I saw, I'm sorry. Num number eight should be, he sprinkled us with his blood. 
because that's how he purged our sins. And then number nine, he's given us a clear conscience. Go back to verse, is that 22 or 21? 22. All right, ready? Read 22. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience right. and our blood washed with pure water. All right, then number 10, he will keep. No, I gave it to you, man. You got to write that stuff down. You over here playing with that iPad. Then I hollered out loud. No, number 10. I just gave them to you. You wasn't listening. You wasn't pointing them buttons. <laughs> it's all right. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Y'all in the middle of my message. I got to get it right here. Man. Number nine, clear conscience. Number 10, he will keep his promise. Read number 22 and 23. And we're getting ready to stand. Let us hold fast. Let's hold fast. Come on, wait a minute, we're going to wait on y'all. I just told y'all, oh, y'all still writing? What verse we on? What verse are we on? All right, ready? Everybody read verse 22 and 23. Ready? Read. Uh-huh. Keep reading. He will keep his promise. Number 10. He gave 10 for 10. Now we are under the new covenant where it's no longer all on me. So even if I do make a mistake, make a bad decision, a mess up, I repent and I come right back to him with boldness because he's doing this for me. He realizes that I am a work in progress. Come on, stand at your feet, and if you were blessed today, give your God a hand clap of praise.